On average, it takes someone more than five months to hike a trail like the 2,653 mile Pacific Crest Trail or the 2,200 mile Appalachian Trail. But what if you wanna go faster? Well, that's great because I love to go fast and I think I have some great advice for you. Now, as always, I'm sure the question on many people's minds is, why hike one of these trails fast to begin with? Well, a big consideration for me over the years has been money. Doing a three month hike of the Appalachian Trail is going to be much cheaper than doing a five or six month hike of the Appalachian Trail. And then of course, there is another huge reason for me personally is I just think it's fun. Different things are fun for different people and going fast on a through hike like one of these is just something that I personally find fun. So there's many different reasons why someone would want to go fast and certainly more than I mentioned there. But what's the problem with going fast? Obviously, you're gonna have a very different experience than those who are hiking in five to six months. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, it's all up to the user. The biggest problem, however, is the potential for injury. I have some tips to hopefully avoid that, but it's absolutely something you need to be well aware of. Whereas someone hiking in five to six months has a much, much lower chance of injury. So let's get into this. What are my best tips for hiking fast? Now, I know I've been saying the word fast a lot, but really that's the opposite of what we're gonna be doing. We are not actually hiking any faster than anyone else out there. My first tip is that you wanna be hiking more hours in the day rather than more miles in the hour. So I personally walk about two miles an hour, sometimes two and a half, and very rarely three or any higher than that. I'm really not going any faster than anyone else. I'm just getting more hours out of the day. You wanna be walking at a comfortable pace, a pace that you can maintain and sustain and be comfortable with from say 5 a.m. all the way until 9 p.m. A pace that you can walk where you're not breathing too hard and you don't actually feel like you need any breaks. This is very much so a game of the tortoise and the hare. My next tip is to be consistent instead of pushing ourselves way too hard on one day and then potentially getting injured or having to rest the next day. It is way easier to be consistent. So of course, in this vein of consistency and more hours during the day, when you're out there, I want you to remember that daylight means hiking, that if the sun is up, you should be hiking. So a lot of the time I will try and wake up just before sunrise and I will start hiking as the sun is rising. I know a lot of people will wake up even earlier than that to try and really utilize those morning hours. I hike all day with very minimal breaks. When nightfall comes, I'll generally do 30 minutes to an hour worth of night hiking each day just to get those bonus miles in. But really, I think the first half of the day is what you wanna focus on. Because if you do the majority of your work in the first half, you're not gonna feel rushed for the second half to get your miles in. Now, of course, this next tip is good for everyone, but I think it's extra important for you, and that is to pack light. We very much so want to be much closer to the ultralight side of the spectrum than anything else. In the end, if you're walking 14 to 16 hours out of the day and only spending like eight hours or nine hours in camp, you really want your gear to reflect that. You're spending the majority of your time hiking, so you want your hiking to be the most comfortable aspect of your trip. Packing light also, of course, helps keep off injury, which for the fast hiker is a very, very big deal. So we gotta pack light on a trip like this. Now, it's one thing to have a bunch of spreadsheets and have a really light pack, but do you know how to actually use that gear? So before you go, not only do you wanna pack light, but you really wanna dial this gear in. You really wanna learn how to use it because out there on the trail is not the time to be fiddling with setting up your tent. Not only is that unsafe if the weather is bad, but also it's just gonna be a waste of time. So get out on your local trails near home and learn how to use all of your gear. Now this has an extra benefit because on a fast through hike, you really wanna start out fast. You wanna start out with those 20s, those 30s right off the bat. So getting out and using your gear is doing double time because you're also training. I highly recommend if you haven't already to get out and try and do a 30 mile day. See how that goes and then do another. See what you can learn during that time. 
Now, if you really, really wanna train for something like this, the absolute best thing that you can do is to do a shorter trail first. There's nothing that will get you in shape like doing a through hike before you do your through hike. So you really wanna start out one of these trails already running. I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit and say to start a little bit slower. So let's say you're trying to hike the Appalachian Trail in 100 days, that's a 22 mile per day average. Maybe start out by doing 18s. I say this because your body is just not gonna be used to doing this every single day, day after day carrying that pack, eating this weird food, being exposed to all these elements, it's just not used to it. The vast majority of injuries that are gonna happen on a through hike are in that first quarter of the trail. So we wanna start out just a little bit slower than average so that we can let our bodies get used to this and then we can pick up those extra miles later on down the trail. My next tip is to know your trail, to plan, to prepare, to be ready, and to know the trail well because it's important to know if a certain section is much harder and you're gonna to need to go slower through it, or it's important to know if a certain section is way easier and you can do extra miles through that area. I went southbound on the Appalachian Trail because Maine and New Hampshire are much harder than every other state south of there. So I knew that I could start out slower purposefully, let my body get used to things, and then pick up way more miles as soon as I got to Vermont. So I think knowing your trail is important and even letting that influence where you start, when you start, how fast you start. And my next tip is that your start date is very important. If I'm trying to hike the Pacific Crest Trail fast, I am not gonna start in March because I'm gonna run into a ton of snow that's gonna slow me down. I wanna start late April or early May because by that time, all the snow will be melted. Same could be said for the Appalachian Trail or any other trail. Your start date is very important as it could really slow you down or speed you up. Now on a trip like this, you wanna be very efficient with your daily tasks. So while you're out there, ask yourself, what do you do throughout the day and how can you speed up that process? Personally, I like to eat while I walk. I keep all of my food in an accessible pocket so that as I'm hiking, I can easily grab it and eat as I go. So how long does it take you to pack up in the morning? How long does it take you to filter your water? See how you can streamline these processes. Another big thing you can do is plan out your day because it's gonna make your jobs much more efficient. If the day before you know it's going to rain tomorrow, you wanna have your rain jacket at the ready so you don't have to stop, dig it out, and put it on. Same goes for cold. If you know it's gonna be cold tomorrow, you wanna to have those insulating layers prepared and ready to go. I want everything to be fast, efficient, and streamlined. While you're out there, staying motivated and staying on task of doing all these miles every day is gonna be difficult. So my little trick for that is making a lot of little small goals for myself. In the Sierra on the Pacific Crest Trail, I wanted to hike over two passes every day. On the Appalachian Trail, I wanted to do Vermont in five days. I'm constantly making little goals for myself out there that I can easily achieve. It kind of helps to gamify this process and make it more fun. So although you will be meeting tons of people every single day because of your pace, it's good to know that you're probably never going to have a trail family. These days, more and more people are going more and more ultralight and hiking faster and faster. So it is possible that you will find some other people going your pace, but it's unlikely and you should probably get used to hiking alone. A huge killer of time on a hike like this or on any through hike is towns. So we want to be as efficient with towns as possible. My best tip for this is to make a to-do list. Two days out, three days out from that town, I will start writing down on my phone the different jobs that I have to do when I get there. The resupply, the electrolytes, the shower, the gear repair, the Googling of that one weird thing you were thinking about. I'm writing all these things down so as soon as I get to town, I can get all my jobs done immediately. So because you've done all your jobs immediately, now you have the wonderful benefit of being able to leave town. So instead of taking a zero day in a town to get all your jobs done, you wanna get in and out. Now, I know in the last video I did, I said that resupply boxes have zero benefit for 99% of people, but I'm gonna tell you to consider doing resupply boxes because guess what? 
you are part of that 1% of people where there is a benefit of doing them. Alongside with all those that have really wild dietary restrictions. So why resupply boxes instead of just shopping in a grocery store? Well, there is just nothing more efficient than getting to town, picking up a box, dumping it in your pack, and then getting back on the trail. In my resupply boxes, I will have my calories all figured out for that next section, how many days I need to that next town. I will potentially already have a new pair of shoes waiting for me in that resupply box. Still, it is worth mentioning that resupply boxes are a ton of work, they take a ton of planning, and they may not be good for everyone. It is not going to be the make or break of your hike. Now, one of the biggest reasons I see people stay in a town instead of just getting in and out is because they wanna have a shower. They have to get that hotel room, so then they wind up staying another night, staying another morning, and potentially turning it into a zero. So my next tip is to keep clean on the go. To keep your feet clean, to wash off your arms, wash off your face, take a swim in that lake, soak your feet, your legs in that river. So when you get to town and you're already pretty clean, you won't feel nearly as much of a need to actually stay the night there. So keep clean on the go. Now with all these tips, I'm not really trying to tell you to never stay in a town, to never take a zero. What I will tell you is if you want to take a zero, you should take them earlier on in the trail rather than later on. That a rest day, a zero day has much more value in that first three weeks of the trail than it does in those last three weeks of the trail. And again, that is because you are just much more likely of getting injured early on rather than later. Something to really be aware of on these trails is that it's extremely easy to get sidetracked, and especially so in towns. Uh, there's even a word for it, to get vortexed. You go into town and next thing you know, it's four days later, you've been sleeping at a church and playing backgammon for the past four days. Why did I do that on the Appalachian Trail? I don't even know. It's just so extremely easy to get vortexed into these places and then to stay in these places. So always remember what you're doing out there, what you want to do, and what your goal is, and how to achieve that. This can be hard because it's a grind to hike uh, 25 miles every day, or 30 miles, or 35 miles every single day. So my next tip is to always be stoked and to keep a good attitude. You know, to remember that you're doing this awesome thing that you really want to do, and you're hiking in this beautiful place, and you're just having this incredible experience. So always be stoked about what you're doing out there because I think it's a really cool thing. Similarly, don't let anyone tell you that what you're doing is stupid. Always keep in mind that everyone enjoys different things and there's gonna be so many people out there that just do not understand what you are doing, why you're doing it, why you wanna do it. And frankly, it's not even worth arguing with them. It's not even really worth taking it any further. So if this is something fun for you and this is something that you enjoy, that is the only thing that really matters. And as always, the last tip is gonna come from you. Have you done a fast through hike or do you have tips for someone who wants to do a fast through hike? Leave your advice down in the comment section below so people have more information than necessarily what I am giving them because I just can't remember everything all the time. But these were my best tips for how to do a through hike fast. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found this video valuable. If you liked it, give me a little thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much. My feet are very cold. <laughs> <laughs>